hopefully um, broadcasting on YouTube as well. I don't know if that's working, but if you don't want to be recorded, then please uh, you turn off your camera and uh, your sound. Um, but yeah, well, it's uh, really great to have um, Steve here again. So over to you, Steve. Great. Um, thanks, uh, James. Okay, um, so uh, we've uh, uh, reached this uh, question of trying to determine what are the uh, extremal bridges um, for the, the Ramey chain. Uh, we uh, had, uh, made this claim that for the, the radix sort, uh, the simplest uh, uh, radix sort chain, uh, that the extremal bridges uh, were just all the radix sort chains um, for um, all the possible um, diffuse uh, uh, input distributions. And we conjectured that maybe um, uh, that was uh, uh, all the uh, uh, Patricia uh, processes uh, were going to be uh, the uh, extremal bridges for the Ramey chain, given that uh, uh, the, the Patricia processes were extremal uh, uh, bridges for the, the Ramey chain once we took into account this uh, uh, slight difference with the initial conditions that they were essentially um, bridges of each other. Um, but uh, we had a little example that showed uh, that that was not the case. We had uh, uh, a bridge for the, the Ramey chain, which was definitely not uh, 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 a Patricia process. And uh, so uh, we saw that the, this question of the extremal bridges for the Ramey chain uh, T was uh, somewhat going to be somewhat more subtle. And so uh, in the, the next several slides, we're going to try to answer that question. So we'll write TN infinity uh, for an extremal Ramey bridge, a generic extremal Ramey bridge. And so remember that uh, such a guy evolves backwards in time by uh, picking a leaf uniformly at random, removing it and its uh, sibling uh, vertex, which may or may not be a leaf, uh, uh, and then uh, closing up the gap uh, if there is one. And uh, we made uh, this observation. Uh, that we could uh, enrich uh, such a bridge uh, with a, a leaf labeling at each stage. Uh, so the, the, the tree that we saw at the nth stage had n plus one leaves. We could label those leaves with uh, the integers one up to n plus one in such a way um, that the, the labeling was uniform over the n plus one factorial possible labelings. And uh, the leaf that was removed uh, was the leaf labeled um, n plus one at each stage. And then we had this construction uh, of uh, this infinite binary tree-like object um, for which n played, uh, the, the integers n played the role, uh, the positive integers n played the role of the, the leaves. And I won't um, go uh, back uh, through that. Um, we spent quite a lot of time talking about that, um, but it was this way of uh, assigning uh, a most recent common ancestor to which pair of, of integers and uh, then, uh, you know, in the vertices of this uh, infinite uh, uh, tree-like object, uh, a way of, for each pair of vertices saying whether uh, one was down and to the left from the other one or down and to the right 
um, from the other one. And we call such a guy um, a, a didendritic um, system. And uh, we observed that a, a didendritic system with a finite label set was nothing other than just a rooted full binary tree. Remember, a full binary tree is um, a, a binary tree where every vertex has zero or two um, children um, labeled by the finite set in. Okay, and um, an observation I want to make is um, if we've got a, a, a sequence of finite rooted full binary trees with the vertices labeled by n plus one um, that has this feature um, that uh, uh, going backwards in time, it's uh, always uh, uh, the, the leaf labeled by n plus two. Um, that's uh, removed and uh, we remove it and it's sibling and we close up the gap, um, then uh, if we, uh, we can construct from it a didendritic system just in the way um, we did um, for um, our labeling of our um, extremal uh, uh, Ramey um, bridge. And that goes the other way, um, that any didendritic system on the positive integers um, arises from such a sequence of uh, label trees for a unique consistent um, system of, of label trees. So um, didendritic systems are just another way of, of thinking about such a sequence of, of label trees. Okay, and now we have a, a, a notion of um, permuting a, a didendritic system. So if we've got a, 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 a didendritic system and a, a permutation of the integers, then there's um, just the, the completely obvious way of talking about um, permuting such a guy. Um, which is, uh, you know, I mean, I've, I've written down in notation um, uh, what it is, but, uh, you know, uh, uh, we'll sort of say, you know, the, uh, you know, we get a, a permuted equivalence relation, um, uh, a, a permuted, uh, most recent common ancestor uh, assignment, uh, a most recent, uh, uh, sorry, a, a permuted um, down and to the left partial order, a permuted down and to the right partial order, and there's something missing here, uh, a, a permuted um, just um, below partial order. Remember, there's a, a, a third partial order just below. Um, and it's sort of the obvious thing that um, uh, I prime J prime uh, is uh, a, a permuted equivalence relation uh, equivalent to I double prime J double prime if and only if um, this happens. And uh, then, you know, you just follow your nose um, for the, the other relation. So it's just a, you just uh, permute the labels and, and do the obvious thing. And that leads to the notion of a, of a random didendritic system being exchangeable if for each permutation um, of the integers that um, fixes all but a finitely um, many um, indices, um, the permuted um, random didendritic system has the same distribution as the one that you started with. So it's the obvious um, notion of exchangeability. It's saying essentially that the, the labels don't matter. Okay. 
and um, not hard to see that the random didendritic system corresponding to the labeled version of a Ramey um, bridge um, is exchangeable. And um, conversely, uh, the sequence of random leaf labeled finite rooted full binary trees um, produced from a, an exchangeable random didendritic system is the labeled version of a Rangi bridge. Remember, we had this observation that if we started um, with a didendritic system, we could build a, a sequence of um, leaf labeled trees that had this consistency property, um, then uh, uh, if uh, so, uh, and uh, in particular, if we start with uh, uh, an exchangeable random didendritic system uh, and do that construction, we actually get uh, a, a leaf labeled version of a Ramey bridge. And of course, now we'll be interested in, you know, what extra property does such an exchangeable random didendritic system have to have? in order for that um, labeled version of a Ramey bridge um, to correspond to a labeled version of um, an extremal Ramey bridge. And um, that's what we address on this slide. An exchangeable random didendritic system is a Godic if, um, the um, uh, the uh, the obvious um, condition holds, you know, the, the sort of usual way um, that uh, we um, express sort of ergodicity for measure preserving transformations. If um, uh, you know. Whenever uh, we have uh, the, the the condition in the the, the first um, the display there, uh, then uh, uh, the probability um, that uh, D um, belongs to such a set um, is either in in zero or one, and then just using uh, kind of uh, uh, general um, theory, sort of um, going back to sort of Varadaraj and, and, and Farrell, uh, you know, people um, like that sort of general kind of agotic theory, um, any exchangeable random didendritic systems, uh, uh, a mixture of agotic exchangeable random didendritic systems, and then uh, one can show, um, you know, this is certainly not immediately obvious, but one can show that the, the tail sigma field of a Ramey bridge is almost surely trivial, which we've claimed is equivalent to the Ramey bridge being extremal, if and only if the corresponding exchangeable random didendritic system is ergodic. So we've kind of reduced um, our question um, to understanding what are the, the agotic exchangeable random didendritic systems. Steve? Yeah. Uh, is that, uh, that delta, is that an operation or a property? Oh, that's, sorry. When I say delta, I mean uh, the um, symmetric difference. Right, but you didn't say anything about the symmetric difference. Did you mean that this is equal to zero? Well, this is uh, the symmetric difference of two events. All oh, right, all oh, right, I, I got it. So it's, it's the, the probability of the symmetric gotcha, difference gotcha. of these two events is zero, uh, gotcha. then um, the, the probability of the event belongs to zero or one. Okay. Okay, so um, now um, 
we want to sort of relate uh, didendritics, random didendritic systems to, to real trees. So suppose we've got an extremal Ramey bridge and it's corresponding um, a Gothic exchangeable random didendritic um, system. Okay, so um, uh, by Definetti and the, 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 the strong law of large numbers, uh, this uh, limit here uh, exists um, for each pair ij um, in uh, n. All right, so uh, exchangeability um, tells us uh, that, that that's the case, um, this guy dij. And then uh, using the properties of a, um, a, a didendritic system, um, you can check that this guy is um, actually a, an ultrametric. Um, uh, you know, clearly um, it's non-negative. Um, what takes a little more work to show um, is uh, that it's equal to zero if and only if i equals j. Well, it's obviously equal to zero um, if, um, uh, well, even that takes um, some work using the properties, but it's equal to zero if and only if i equals j. Um, it's uh, clearly um, symmetric. And it has this thing that's called the, the strong triangle in in it satisfies this thing called the ultrametric inequality or the strong triangle inequality. And just in case people aren't familiar with this, this um, wedge notation here, um, I'm using this to denote the, the maximum of the, the two quantities. So instead of the usual plus um, that we'd um, see uh, in the, the triangle inequality, we have the maximum of the two uh, uh, quantities. So this is obviously something stronger than the, the triangle inequality. And so um, a fortiori, uh, this object D um, is um, almost surely a metric on the, the, the integers. So, um, we found a way of um, uh, building uh, 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 a metric uh, on the integers, which is actually um, sort of better than a metric, it's uh, an ultra metric. Now I need to say something about uh, R trees, real trees. So in general, if we've got a, a, a metric space, let's call it um, XD, um, a, a segment um, in um, such a metric space is the um, image of an isometric mapping um, alpha from a, a, a closed interval in the reals um, into to x, so a distance preserving map um, in the uh, from a closed interval in the reals into x, and we'll call the alpha a and alpha b um, the the endpoints of the the segment, and a metric space is called a geodesic metric space if for all x and y in x. Um, there's a, a, a segment in X with endpoints X and Y. And so obviously lots of metric spaces are geodesic. RN's geodesic, um, you know, Banach spaces um, are, are, are geodesic. Um, you know, many um, uh, metric spaces are geodesic. Um, okay. Uh, and now um, we need um, the notion of a real tree, which is uh, 
a metric space, which is in some sense tree-like. Now, there's many ways of expressing this, um, uh, all of which uh, abstract um, some sort of notion of being um, tree-like. Uh, just the one that I've picked uh, is the following. Um, first of all, uh, uh, we require the, the metric space to be geodesic. Um, there's, you know, a, a segment joining um, any two uh, points. And moreover, if you've got two segments that intersect in a single point, and then you take the union of those two segments, um, you get another geodesic. Okay, and if you just think about um, ordinary sort of, you know, trees with edge length, you know, the sort of familiar kind of combinatorial type objects, trees with edge lengths, they have that property, you know, between any two points in a tree with edge lengths, um, there's a shortest path. And uh, that's what we mean by geodesics. And uh, if you have two shortest paths that intersect at a single point, which is an endpoint of both of them, then the union of those two shortest paths is a shortest path. And just a, a little useful fact in an R tree um, for um, uh, any X and Y in the real tree, there's actually a unique um, segment in X within points X and Y. That sort of takes um, some, some showing, but it's a useful fact to keep in mind. So we want to um, construct uh, an R tree um, using this metric D that we've built. Um, so um, if we've got two vertices in our um, didendritic system, here's the most recent common ancestor of um, a, uh, the leaves H and I, here's the most recent common ancestor of the leaves J and K. Well, the most recent common ancestor of these two vertices is going to be of the form L and M where L is like this and M is like that, then uh, in terms of the metric D, uh, L and M have to be uh, any such pair for which the distance between L and M uh, looks uh, uh, like this. And it's natural to try to extend the metric um, to give a distance between such internal vertices of the tree um, by um, setting the distance between two such internal vertices um, to be given by that. If you sort of sit down and sort of draw a picture of a, a tree, this would be the, the natural um, uh, choice that you'd make um, for uh, assigning uh, a, a distance between um, those two internal vertices. And so, you know, rewriting that in terms of the distance between leaves, um, this is what you'd be left with as the natural choice for the distance between these two um, internal vertices. Well, um, this is not exactly um, what um, we do in the, the paper with Rudolf Grubel and um, Anton Verkolbinger, um, but um, it's sort of essentially what we do. Um, one can check that this extension is indeed um, a, a, a metric and it satisfies this thing called the, 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 the four point condition. Um, that is, if we've got any um, uh, four equivalence classes, um, at least one of these 
four sets of pin, uh, one of these three sets of equivalence classes hold. So this says, you know, the distance from W to X plus the distance from Y to Z is less than the distance from W to Y plus the distance from X to Z. That's what happens in this picture here. Or what you get by pairing up vertices in the other uh, um, two possible ways. And a sort of rather remarkable thing um, is true, um, which is that the four point condition is necessary and sufficient for you being able to embed things in a real tree. This is a sort of very famous theorem in the subject. So because the four point condition holds, we can embed um, the, the points in our real tree in a distance preserving manner, preserving this distance D into a minimal complete real tree, let's call it T um, with a root um, in such a way that um, a vertex KL is down and below a vertex IJ if and only if um, ij is on the geodesic segment from the root row to kl. Okay, so the, the sort of natural partial order in our real tree corresponds um, to the, the partial order um, uh, below um, in our uh, uh, didendritic um, system. Okay, which is what I have as the um, the second bullet point there. Uh, now, um, what uh, we need to introduce now is this sort of notion of the, the, the core of the, the tree, um, which is the, the, the smallest closed subtree um, that contains all of these um, interior um, vertices. So all of these guys that consist of most recent common ancestors of pairs of leaves. And then there's a projection operator that for um, any X um, in uh, this real tree that we've just built, um, uh, projects it onto a unique point in S that's um, closest to X. So I've um, drawn it in such a way that X looks like it's a, a, a leaf of T, but of course um, X doesn't have to be a, a, a leaf. Okay, and uh, uh, it sort of takes me sort of too long to explain sort of really um, uh, why um, we need to consider this idea of um, the core, but you'll get a bit of a feeling for it um, later um, when we look at a, at a particular example. Okay, so now um, let's let um, psi k um, be um, the, the projection um, of, of, of K, okay? The, so the projection of the, um, the leaf K in our didendritic system, okay? Which we can think of as an element of our um, real tree. So the, the projection of the equivalence class um, uh, uh, labeled K, okay? And uh, just the, the equivalence relation uh, it turns out the equivalence relation in the partial order below can be reconstructed um, from um, this infinite sequence. And um, uh, by Definetti and our assumption of ergodicity, um, this sequence of guys is an IID sequence um, with some com common distribution mu when Mu's a, a diffuse probability measure on S. Okay, so uh, you know this is 
sort of um, perhaps, you know, sort of not, um, you know, completely surprising because, you know, our labels um, were uh, uh, sort of uniformly um, uh, uh, distributed um, on our various trees at, at each stage. And we're seeing, um, uh, you know, some uh, 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 ghostly uh, reminder of, of that. And now um, any diadendritic system, okay, and sorry, I again missed out um, the, the partial order less than in the, the diadendritic system um, is on, on N, and I should have mentioned this as a diadendritic system on N, um, is uniquely determined by the equivalence relation um, and the partial order less than and a determination for each pair of distinct labels, whether the most recent common ancestor of I and J is, um, uh, well, I is um, below and to the left of the most recent common ancestor of I and J, and J is below and to the right or vice versa. Okay, if you just, you know, think about um, uh, finite full binary trees, um, that's uh, with the, the leaves labeled one up to N, um, that's sort of a, 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 a fairly obvious um, comment. And now it's just a matter of using the, the axioms of diadendritic systems to see that uh, that uh, claim is, is true for, for them. So uh, we, we just have to um, have this um, uh, work out this um, notion of, you know, uh, ordering in the, the, the tree as in the, the, the right, the left ordering of children. So, uh, so let's um, uh, define um, Jij um, to be equal to zero if this alternative holds, and to be equal to one if the the the, the second alternative um, holds. Now, okay, so this is a, a an infinite two-dimensional array indexed. Um, by the positive integers. And um, it's uh, jointly exchangeable, okay, in the sense that we usually mean for such arrays, right, that if we um, apply the same permutation to the row indices and the column indices, we get something that has the same distribution that's coming from the, the exchangeability of the didendritic system. And this guy is um, uh, ergodic in the, the, the same sort of sense that we used ergodicity um, for didendritic systems, that uh, events that are permutation invariant um, have uh, probability zero or one. Okay, and fortunately, <clears throat> people much smarter than I um, have uh, figured out um, uh, the structure of, of such things. Okay, so there's this absolutely wonderful theory of David Aldous. Um, uh, uh, oh, I'm blanking on Hoover's first name, uh, and Olaf Kullenberg. Um, Doug uh, what is it, Ed? Doug. Doug, Doug, Douglas, yeah. A yeah. uh, theory of um, jointly exchangeable arrays. Um, that uh, 
says um, that uh, if we use some uh, extra um, uh, randomness coming from some, you know, there's nothing sort of special about these guys being IID um, uh, uniforms, uh, uh, but, uh, you know, we'll take them to be that. That the JIJs um, can be built um, in uh, such a way, uh, built like this, where uh, UIJ equals UJI um, if we, for I bigger than J. Okay, um, for a, a general um, jointly exchangeable array, um, uh, we'd also have a, 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 a single. Um, uh, once and for all uniform random variable in this picture. Um, but we don't need that because we've assumed ergodicity. So ergodicity means that we don't um, need um, some overall randomization. Um, okay, and uh, with um, some extra work, you can show um, that uh, we don't need uh, this uh, uh, individual randomization here um, so that um, JIJ is actually of this, this form here. Okay, so um, just for each pair I and J, um, we uh, uh, need uh, a uh, 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 this function, which is going to tell us uh, whether, um, you know, uh, I is below and to the left of the most recent common ancestor of I and J, or below and to the right of the most recent common ancestor of I and J. Okay, so sorry for the... Um, the, the, the full slide, but um, just want to um, collect everything together, okay? So where have we got to? Any Ramey bridge is a mixture of extremal Ramey bridges, which are ones with trivial tail sigma fields. There's a bijection between extremal Ramey bridges and these ergodic exchangeable random dendritic systems. And any ergodic exchangeable random dendritic system is determined by a complete separable R tree that we'll call S, a distinguished vertex of that guy that we'll call the root and denote by R, a diffuse sampling probability measure mu on S, and a left versus right. Um, function G um, that's of um, this um, form uh, here. Okay, and uh, things of course aren't um, arbitrary here. Um, G has to play nice um, with the tree S and uh, you know, there's a, a bunch of desiderata um, for how G has to interact with um, S. Um, and I won't write um, all of those out. Um, just as an example, um, for example, uh, uh, sort of mu almost everywhere. Um, you know, uh, if you, you know, sample three points from S, um, then uh, what you have to have happen is um, that um, two of the, the three geodesic segments um, like this uh, uh, are equal. And these two uh, uh, are strictly contained 
um, in the, the, the third one. Okay, so um, uh, this is, um, you know, sort of there's a derata uh, about um, how um, you know, these things uh, work with each other. And, you know, if you go and look at the paper um, with um, Rudolf Drubel and Anton de Kolbinger, you can see the, the, the conditions. And this is an if and only if any ensemble that satisfies the consistency condition gives rise to an ergodic exchangeable random guided bridge system and hence to an extreme or rainy bridge. Okay, so let's look at an example here. Let's um, recall the Ramey Bridge um, that we saw was a counterexample to our naive conjecture. So that was the guy that at time in, its value is a finite rooted full binary tree that has n plus one vertices along a single spinal path. Um, and um, you know, zigzags down um, according to the, the tosses of a fair coin and then has leaves um, uh, inserted to turn it into a, uh, a full binary tree. Now, what's our complete separable R tree? Well, it's a pretty simple complete separable R tree. It's um, just the interval zero, one. That's certainly. Um, uh, uh, an R tree. Um, the the root is just the point um, uh, zero one. Uh, the the diffuse um, sampling measure is just um, Lebesgue measure. And now, what's our left versus right function? And now um, it's um, given by the, the, the following. So um, uh, if X comes before Y in the interval and our, our randomizing uniform is less than a half, then it's going to be one. Whereas if X comes before Y, and our randomizing uniform is bigger than a half, it's zero. Okay, and so this is just doing exactly this thing of providing the coin toss, um, which uh, gives us the, the left versus uh, saying uh, that as we go down the spinal path, the, the spinal path um, goes to the left or the right um, with probability um, a, a half each. Um, and uh, then the same thing if y is less than x, um, then uh, it's the, the randomizing variable um, that's associated with y um, that determines um, the relevant kink in the spine. Okay. So, um, you know, here's a, 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 a simple example where you really do need this extra randomization um, to, to determine left versus right, but left versus right is not something that's just baked um, into a, a, a deterministic description of the 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 R tree um, S. Okay, so now want to get back to this sort of what for me um, was sort of a bit of a mystery, which is um, why are things much simpler for the radix sort chain? Why is it that for the radix sort chain are all the bridges um, just, you know, for the simplest radix sort chain where the inputs are um, fair coin tossing, why is it that the, the extremal chains are just radix sort chains 
um, for other um, diffuse input distributions. And this seems to be something that has to do with a monotonicity condition, a monotonicity property, I should say, that's present in the radix sort chain that's not present in the, the, the Ramey um, chain or um, equivalently the, the Patricia chains. So once again, we can do this um, decorating of a radix sort bridge um, by um, uh, labeling of the leaves such that um, the leaf we remove is always the highest numbered leaf. So let's just recall the way that works. Um, we've got a radix sort bridge. Um, we can build um, a, a, a process Rn tilde infinity such that Rn tilde infinity for some n is a leaf labeled rooted binary tree with n leaves labeled by the numbers one up to n in such a way that if we remove the labels from Rn tilde infinity, we get Rn infinity. The way that the labels appear in Rn tilde infinity is uniform over the possible labelings of Rn infinity. And in going backwards from time n plus one to n, Rn plus one tilde infinity is transformed into Rn tilde infinity by doing a, a, a radix sort prune of the leaf labeled n plus one. Okay, so, you know, we've argued how you can always do that via a, 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 a Kolmogorov extension argument. Okay, so um, there's only so much notation around, so I'm using angle brackets to mean something else now. This is, we've left the world of didendritic systems, so angle brackets mean something else now. So um, given um, a number i um, in the range one up to n, um, let's let um, i um, angle brackets n um uh, uh be the um binary word um uh which is the the leaf of um r in infinity that has the the label i in r in infinity you know in the the labeled version of r in infinity and the, 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 the crucial observation um, is, um, of course, this guy first makes sense at time i. And in our um, usual partial order on binary words, this guy just gets bigger no matter what um, our uh, um, uh, bridge is, the backward dynamics are always such, well, the backward dynamics are sort of decreasing, so the forward dynamics are increasing in such a way um, that the, the location of the leaf labeled I is always increasing in our um, partial order on um, binary words. So um, it makes sense to talk about um, angle brackets I infinity, um, which will be either a finite binary word or an infinite binary word. And uh, if you sit down and think about it for a while, um, 
the most recent common ancestor of uh, the the leaf the leaves labeled I and J is the same for all n um, such that this thing makes sense, and in particular it coincides with the most recent common ancestor of their um, ultimate destinations. Okay. Now, um, claim is that this sequence of ultimate destinations of labels is exchangeable. And that's sort of obvious from just the fact that um, for NEN, um, our labeling um, was done uh, uniformly um, uh, conditional um, on the tree R in infinity. Okay, so it's clearly finitely exchangeable. And so the, the limits uh, are going to be um, exchangeable. Okay, um, I don't have time to sort of go through all the, um, the, the details here. Um, and so I'll um, just uh, state some things and uh, leave the, um, the, the proofs in the slides for uh, people to look at. The next claim is that the, the tail sigma field of R in infinity is almost surely trivial um, if and only if this sequence of ultimate destinations is, which we've just seen is exchangeable, is in fact um, an independent identically distributed um, sequence. Okay, and there's a, a, a uh, an explanation uh, of that in the, the slide there. And now, um, oh, this should say I infinity, sorry. And now if I infinity is independent and identically distributed with common distribution nu, then the claim is that nu is concentrated on infinite words. Well, um, this takes sort of a little bit of work. Um, it can't have any mass um, uh, on uh, finite words because that would um, sort of lead um, to uh, things getting sort of uh, labeled kind of multiple times is basically what um, the, the obstruction is. And uh, so, uh, you know, it's, it's fairly straightforward reasoning, but um, it does take some thought. And so um, uh, we see that, uh, you know, the, the claim is that this guy, you know, if they are IID, um, their common distribution has to be diffuse. And <clears throat> then um, the <clears throat> claim is that the, the tail sigma field of R in infinity is um, P almost surely trivial if and only if R in infinity has the same distribution as the, uh, the, the radix sort bridge for some diffuse probability measure nu. And this I will sort of go over um, the, 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 the proof. Um, you know, we've already seen that when nu is a diffuse probability measure, on um, zero one infinity um, that um, the the corresponding radix sort process is a, a radix sort bridge for um, the the simplest 
writing sort pro process. And now because this guy um, is built uh, um, in a, uh, you know, the way that it's just built from the, the inputs, um, the tail sigma field um, is built, you know, kind of, you know, symmetrically um, from the, the inputs. And um, so from Hewitt Savage, um, the, uh, the, the tail sigma field um, is uh, going to be, be trivial. Okay, so that gives one um, direction. And the other direction is, is kind of cute. Um, suppose that the, the, the bridge R infinity has a tail sigma field, has a trivial tail sigma field. Um, let mu be the, the common diffuse distribution of the independent identically distributed sequence of um, uh, ultimate destinations of labels um, I infinity. Well, it's just clear that the value at time n of the bridge is just what we get by doing um, building the radix sort tree from uh, all of these should be infinities again. Sorry, I'm uh, building the radix sort tree from the infinite binary words, which are the ultimate destinations of one up to the ultimate destinations, up to the ultimate destination of n, right? So these guys are just getting pushed out um, and the ultimate destinations um, end up being uh, infinite binary words um, that are uh, IID with common distribution, um, some uh, uh, Distri diffuse distribution new on zero one infinity. So sorry for these um, missing infinities um, on the, the the bottom here. Um, but uh, you know this monotonicity. Um, we had these labels um, getting pushed out um, to infinity, and um, this is just true for all n, and so R in infinity just has the same distribution. This process has the same distribution as the uh, radix sort chain um, with uh, uh, IID inputs distri distributed according to, to new. And so uh, we see that uh, radix sort chains are the only game in town when it comes to extremal bridges for the radix sort process. And so that depended on uh, this property of um, uh, exactly on this property here that um, these labels um, just getting bigger and bigger so we could define this guy I infinity. And that just doesn't happen um, in uh, the, uh, the Ramey, um, for Ramey bridges, the labels just sort of get all mixed up and there's no sort of sense in which we have an ultimate destination. And uh, that's sort of the, the best answer that I can give to why things get a lot more complicated for um, Ramey bridges or equivalently Patricia bridges. And with that, I'll um, thank uh, my um, collaborators uh, on uh, this uh, Rudolf Grubel um, and uh, Anton uh, Kolbinger, uh, Rudolf on uh, uh, two of the, the early papers and Anton uh, on sort of all I guess uh, four of the papers uh, that uh, this is, is, is based on. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Steve, for that fascinating course. Um, let's all um, 
thanks. You feel free to unmute yourself and we can all thank um, Steve. And um, any questions or comments or thoughts? Matthias. Yes. Yes, I have. I mean, I'm more familiar with the Remy tree growth without the order. And I wonder whether I could take you to that case and ask maybe a rather basic question. So does your theory 